When I was recovering from major surgery, I enrolled on the Living Memory Research Programme with Rainbow Light. The surgical team had saved my life and now I needed help to discover the causes of the condition. I was frail and it felt a mammoth task to find the surplus energy needed to delve deep into the dark corners of myself to understand what changes I needed to make. Imagery and creativity played a big part in my recovery as I began to shift negative patterns and restore flow, knowing that it was my task to prevent the condition returning. Artwork helped me to make crucial changes in patterns of thought, feeling and behaviour and practising the emerald alignment and meditation enabled me to work intuitively. It was in a therapy session that an image came to me of being huddled in a gloomy cave of thorns while outside in the sunshine, a blackbird is singing out, calling me into a garden of roses. I set out to recreate the scene and made a collage picture called Among Thorns. The hunched figure is withdrawn, desolate and in the shadows, but nevertheless is filled with stars, hidden away and yet full of light and possibility. I found that I was able to tap into the healing force within the image. The hunched figure echoed the way I had felt grief-stricken by my son's decline. I'd felt as though my heart had been harpooned and left bleeding. I had been holding pain, grief and guilt within the body over a long period of time. Making art shone a light, gently but firmly to help me see that I'd had a habit of suffering in silence and of believing that I was somehow obliged to suffer. I began to understand that a part of me had got lost and had been following a path of thorns. I needed to gather the fragmented parts of myself together and determine instead to follow the path of roses. I saw that this choice of paths is presented to us constantly in life. These beautiful roses were sent to me when I was recovering from surgery. I had been left with a heart condition and images of roses really helped me. I often imagined the sun rising at dawn within my heart and a rose gently opening there. I wrote of a woman making herself a hat out of rose petals and I made pictures of her surrounded by bees, with birds and with a butterfly. In the process I was emerging from exile in the cave, called towards the perfume of the roses and drawn to the sunlight in the garden. But first of all there came a sequence of images of the moon. The images appeared one by one in my mind's eye and I recreated them on paper. They provided signposts along a path of recovery, into darkness and out again, helping me to work with pain and to transmute it. Looking back to childhood, I remembered that aged about five, my two elder brothers had poisoned themselves by eating laburnum pods, mistaking them for peas. Everyone rushed to the hospital and I was put to bed by a neighbour. 
I woke in the night to find myself all alone in the house and I was terrified. I locked myself in the bathroom and stared out of the window at the moon. In this photo of me aged five, I am wearing a favourite red and white spotted bolero that my mother had made for me. It was over half a century later when I found out about the flamenco dancer that I connected this much loved item of clothing with that past life memory. Then I saw that the dancer had been calling to me all my life. And I also saw that in coming out of exile, I needed to rescue and retrieve an aspect of myself that had stayed behind on the moon. Making images of a woman sailing, calling and waving to the moon helped me in the process of reintegration. Working on the pictures allowed me to untangle and to release. I could finally let go of the feeling of being all alone in the house. And then there came a shift in my artwork from images of the moon to images of the sun. I know that art can help us to heal. Developing trust in the creative process is in itself healing as we are supporting the soul to do the work of repairing itself. Artwork connects the inner and the outer worlds and enables a vital movement to take place. It is movement that's at the heart of healing and stagnation that causes disease. We create movement when we make shifts in our thoughts, habits, beliefs, perceptions and behaviour. We need to keep strengthening our connection to higher consciousness and to transform the dense energy that is not helping us to grow. When we align and allow healing creativity to do its work, then a higher vibration can find ways to mend what is broken. I was enabled to work on images intuitively by practicing the emerald alignment and a simple method of meditation with colour breathing as taught by Rainbow Light Trust. Allowing our imagination to flourish opens up an amazing resource of imagery which can be used to mend our wounded selves, nurture fresh growth and restore balance and flow. In part three of Restoring the Flow, I'll take a look at the painting I made called Grass Grows, River Flows.